Hey guys, today's video is going to be very, very different from any other video we've ever made. You might see I've got my glasses on. That's because I actually have a script today. I've never had a script in any of these videos. But what I want to say to you today is part of my heart and it's very, very important. So I want to be sure that I get it all in there and that I get it right. Um, we're not going to be sharing a new creative technique today. Instead, Donna and I are going to be talking to you um, about the fact that a lot of us have difficulty focusing when we're being creative. We have a hard time sometimes staying on task. Sometimes we have a hard time taking on only one project at a time. We've got a whole mess of them covering numerous surfaces, several layers deep. Um, I've been in the creative business now for well over 25 years and I've noticed over that time knowing thousands of artists, literally, that this is a common problem with, I would say, the majority of us. Not all of us, but probably the majority. Probably. Yes. Um, sometimes we are just so over the moon for a new technique that we're just bouncing off all the walls. Yeah. And we have bazillions of new ideas. I often say, I, know what to do I often them. say I'm the idea girl. How many of you have heard that? The idea girl often doesn't bring the idea to fruit. There's a reason for that. Um, it's, it's like gazelles leaping in the woods, crossing all over each other and merging and bumping into each other and uh, then the thought disappears and the great idea is gone unless we write it down. So we make messes and we complete our projects in a random fashion. Uh, we buy products that we never put away. Sometimes I've known folks that will get shipments and, and, and never unpack them. Um, sometimes we just can't produce anything because the crazy way that our minds work and the unbelievable mess that we've made. So, um, you ever hear, you know, people saying that they thrive on chaos? You hear it, but it's not true. We don't thrive on chaos. It makes us miserable. We just don't know what to do about yeah. our chaos. Yeah. In the long run, chaos uh, creates anxiety. And then too much anxiety many times will create depression, which is the result of expectations not met. That's what depression is. Expectations not met. Nobody wants to be depressed. We want to be creative. We want to have fun. We want to be vigorous in our activity. So what do you do when your brain's like that? flying off all the walls all the time. What do you do? What do you do, Donna? Well, for a while I didn't know what to do. And because I'm such a determined person, I investigated. I read books, um, talked to other people, and then I decided I would get counseling for it. And I looked for a counselor that specialized in AD, ADD and ADHD. Mm -hmm. I still didn't think I had it, but I thought, well, well, you know, might as well mm -hmm. see what it is. Mm -hmm. It tends to run in families, and my dad, I could tell, had fit the criteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I read, I, I thought, well, you know, this makes sense to me. And I always want to fix something. I, I, if I, it's just my way. Yeah, I want to do something fixers. about it. I don't mm -hmm. let anything defeat me. It's just a, it's just a stepping stone mm -hmm. to how do I handle yeah. this. That's that's my yeah. approach. Brenda. So when Donna um, first went to counseling, she was really into it, and she was sharing all these things with me, and I was having a hard time too. And I eventually decided that I would go because I felt very anxious because of business and so forth, and so many details in my life, and. So I went to the same counselor and eventually he gave me a little three-page test. He said, be as honest as you can, writing down your answers. Well, <laughs> about one page in, you took the same one. Yeah. About one page into the test, I thought, we don't need to take this test. This fool is testing me for ADHD. I don't have 
ADHD. That's not what's wrong with me. Yeah, that's for but kids. I, but, but I'm like, well, yeah. you know, I like the guy. I, I think out, adults outgrow it. That's what yeah, we're supposed yeah, to Yeah, we think it's for kids that eat it. too much sugar or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, you know. So I, I finished the test out of respect for the man, and I had no sooner done one more page than I knew I had it. And I remember pushing the test across the desk back at him and saying, <laughs> I have ADHD and not just a little bit. And he said, yes, I know. And I said, how long have you known? He said, since the day you walked in here. Because he was an expert on it. So both Don and I have ADHD. And this is short for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And there's four different kinds. Yes. And you don't have to be bouncing off the walls to have it either. It's You can have a calmer And we version. actually have two different kinds. Yeah. I have different aspects than she does. So we actually complement each other. But um, a lot of people laugh and make jokes about it. Under, others wonder, you know, if they have it. But did you know that some of the most successful entrepreneurs, business people, and artists have ADHD? Because after I took that test, I said to my counselor, how could I have managed to keep a business afloat for over 25 years with ADHD? And it was simple. He said, because you love it. People who have ADHD, who love what they're doing, can do anything. So if you love what you do, and I assume you love your art, don't worry about it. It's not a curse. It's actually a blessing. It, you can learn to really tap in to your inner moves. And then we also want to make it plain that, you know, by telling you a few things that we've learned, we're not counselors. No, we're not trying to be. We, we want to bring an awareness to you. That's really it. That's all it That's is. That's it. We just want to bring an awareness to you. It's just like a woman maybe who's had breast cancer, who's a celebrity, yeah. which we're not celebrities, but she may have had it, uh, and she goes on a little campaign to make, you know, awareness. Yeah, and because... But she doesn't, she's not a nurse or a doctor, you know, but she's just awareness, you know, so... Uh, I think because we care so much about all of you, and the whole basis of what Brenda has done through the years is to nurture people that are creative and because it was an absolute weight off our shoulders when we understood why sometimes things are harder for us than other people some simple tasks and what it did is it empowered us yes and then we knew well let's learn ways to deal with this tap mm -hmm. into it benefit mm -hmm. from it at the same time you manage yeah. it and so yeah so yeah. in this video I don't know if it's on my face in this video, that's my face. No, you're fine. There's the ADHD. Um, <laughs> and we also talk over each other yes. with ADHD. And, that's a sign. And we're sorry about that, but this is, uh, we've been sister-in-laws for almost 39 years, and so we have our own little banter thing. And so we like twin talk. <laughs> time, yeah. And we don't offend each other. No. We, no. We're, we're so safe with each other. And, yeah. and what we do is we interrupt because we're afraid we're going to forget what we have to say, yeah. which yeah. is not good. But anyway, getting back to it, the good news is, is that you can live successfully in a non-ADHD world with ADHD. I have an illustration for you, and then I have a little exercise to help you uh, rethink things when you're getting overwhelmed. So I'm gonna go ahead with that, tell you a little story. It's about Bob and Tom. Bob lived in Boston, Tom lived in Dallas, they met on the internet, they were potters, artists. They both made different kinds of pottery, ceramics, so they're, they networked very well. So Bob calls Tom and says, hey, or maybe he emailed them or something. I don't know. But anyway, lets him know, hey, there's this fabulous opportunity in Florida for us to sell our work. We ought to bug on down there. Tom says, well, uh, yeah, okay. Sounds, sounds good. Yeah, I'll meet you there. So Bob hurries up and he gets going. He flies. He makes a dead straight beeline. For Florida, I should mention to you, Bob's the one that does not have, have it. ADHD, Tom does. Okay, so he gets there and he starts selling. And he's selling, oh man, he's, you know, you ever, you ever been at a show? I wish this for you, you're stuffing money in your pocket. I've, I've done a few like that, they're wonderful, that's the kind of show it was. And then, and even before Tom gets there, 
Bob has to leave the spot and go clear back on home to Boston and get more pots. And he's selling like crazy. Well, Tom took he, a few days to get ready. Yeah, he probably uh, procrastinated a little bit, actually. Uh, a little you know, bit. You know, he it got is, distracted. He got distracted and he stayed on the internet a little too long, telling some other people about where he was going. And he was excited and then he wasn't organized. You know, he never thought he was going to be leaving town that quick. And uh, he didn't have a you know, go-to box ready and to leave. It's hard. You know, it was hard for him to sequence things. Because yeah, it's yeah, challenging. Yeah, but you know, he got. He finally got on the road after about two days, and he's going down the interstate, and he's state, and he's making a beeline. But then he notices he's going to go right by a Stuckies. <laughs> oh. Stuckies. <laughs> no, he's going to go right by a pal's house. Okay. You know that he knew from the internet. And it's like, oh man, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to see him. So. Um, he does and he ends up being there a couple of days but while he's there he makes a bunch of great new contacts but he does i gotta get on the road so he gets on the road and he's almost there and he remembers oh yeah there's this other guy was gonna help me uh, learn this new glaze and so i'm gonna stop there and so he stops for a couple of days and learns the new glaze and everything he's having a good time good and then he gets on the road he finally gets there to bob and bob has already left a couple of times and got more inventory and there's a little bit of selling opportunity left. Tom does some selling, but Bob basically goes home, no pots, everything's sold out, pockets just jam full of money. Tom has a little bit of money and a whole half truckload of pottery left. So, you know, it's kind of sad. Tom's feeling a little bit bad for the missed opportunities, but he made money too, and he had some very rich experiences along the way. Uh, don't ball over missed opportunities it is better to be focused but here's what tom did on the way home he stopped the one guy's place where he learned the glaze learned a little more about it and then he went and sold some of his stuff and then he went home and he stopped at some other contacts along the way on the way home and sold the rest of his inventory off to some shopkeeps so he did all right and he was happy and it all worked out so you have bob making the straight line and tom taking the great circle Learning, having a good time, but kind our, of for free spirit. But our therapist friend said it all comes out in the end. Yes, it does. It's all good in the end. So um, if your brain tends to take the great circle route, don't despair too much. It can work out for you too, okay? And that's what we want you mm -hmm. to know. Yeah. And then we have a little exercise for you. It's called the four R's. Remember the four R's, Donna? I remember them. I I've uh, practiced that until they live by them. become part of your personality. Yeah, yeah. really practice until they become part of your personality. And the first one, the first R is retreat. When you get in a situation that's you're feeling stumped because of the mess in your workshop and you're just feeling like I, I can't deal with this, retreat. That means back up, don't bother. You're going to a negative place. Number two, relax, relax. relax. Let the feelings of defeat go because the feeling of defeat in this case is a lie. Yeah, it's just anxiety. You, you are not defeated. Mm -mm. Breathe in and breathe out. Three is rethink. Yeah, and it can be any amount of time you need to rethink that. Yeah, yeah. There's whatever no time you, Whatever you need, right. You can think, how can I organize this mess better? Make a plan. Make a list. Journal. That's important. ADHD people live best by lists, plans, journaling. Very, very important. And then the fourth thing you do after you do the other three R's is you react. That means now it's time to move into action. Now it's time to work on your plan, make your reality, do what you need to do to make yourself a decent place to work, make a list of the things you'd like to learn, do them one by one. A lot of people say, oh, well, this is just multitasking. No. The human brain does not function effectively on doing three, four things at once. There are always days when all of us have to juggle a little bit. But In general. Yes. In general, living a life that way, that's the ADHD brain. And it's exhausting. And it's exhausting. You're tired all the time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's not how you tap into your inner muse. That's, yeah. time. that's how you wear your poor little self out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we've done it. So, um, 
So we wanted to mention at the end here, these are just a few things that we've learned, and there's much more that can be said. You can look it up. There are books. I found this book that I like very much. It's called ADD, which is just Attention Deficit Disorder without the hyperactivity. We have the hyperactivity where your brain is like bouncing off the walls um, by Lynn Weiss. And the story about Bob and Tom is in this book, so I didn't make that up. Um, I found this book to be extremely empowering and encouraging. I got it at Barnes & Noble, so uh, if you can find it, good one to get. Good one to get. And uh, we want to mention where we learned this stuff. His name is um, Dr. Richard Lillo. He's a counselor. He's one of the best. And not all counselors are the same. But a, a good counselor simply is, tell you, explains to you how the brain works so that you can work in harmony with it. And a good counselor is hard to find. And we had one, and he taught us very much. The last, just a few days ago, we've lost Richard. And um, he, he passed away. Um, but what he left is he left uh, many people better off than they were. Yes. He taught, he taught people because he cared, and he helped them. He inspired them to to never give up. You know, have have the right attitudes about things, and to always rethink and look at a situation and make the best of it. And um, we're motivated today to try to be helpful to you, just like Richard was with us. Yeah, I used to tell Richard, write that down, tell me that again, because I want to use that, because not everyone is able to get to a therapist, and I think I could use this to help someone. And people are afraid of it, and with good and he reason, was happy, actually. happy, happy for me to do that. Yeah, some, some counselors, I mean, um, mm -hmm. are, are not all, they're not all the same. Some, some just aren't very helpful, but a good counselor, I don't mm -hmm. mean a therapist, that's totally different. Mm -hmm. A good counselor simply explains how the mind works and how we are working in harmony or fighting um, our own selves. And, right. Yeah. And he used to, Richard liked to quote from songs. And he said, yeah. he used to, and, I, and you, if you follow my blog or you're on the Facebook group, the BC Boutique's Creative Group, you've heard me say this from Ricky Nelson's Song Garden Party. Mm -hmm. You can't please everyone, so you've got to mm -hmm. please yourself. Richard used to tell me that at least once a month. So, and it's really true. And when you're an artist, do the best you can. Bring your, your best work to the table. Uh, be determined. Be focused on your art that you love, and it'll all work out. And it then, will. It'll all work out. And then Richard's life was far too short, but it was full of rich experiences, and we were blessed to have him as our helper and as our friend. And uh, we hope maybe we've shed a little bit of light on what ADHD is. And if you want to investigate it for, it's just a few clicks away on Google, and yeah. I'm sure you can find someone excellent who specializes in ADHD and if you find you have it don't ever beat yourself up about no, it don't be discouraged no it's not no. a curse in fact for work us as it. artists it's a blessing yeah work with it yes it's not a blessing it. for artists so you have a good day now take care